Uh, so let's get into the Qantas situation. So last time we talked about uh, how Qantas was getting in trouble with the ACCC, the Consumer Watchdog of Australia, uh, because they were selling flights, uh, selling tickets, sorry, for flights that were already cancelled um, and not telling people until very last minute. So I saw this um, article. This came out September 12th, but I only heard about it recently. So the High Court apparently revealed that every current judge is a member of Qantas's most exclusive club in Australia. So this was during, uh, the High Court is uh, revealing this because Qantas is currently in a lawsuit or something with um, uh, a workers union for firing 1,700 workers during the scamdemic. So here it talks about how it's uh, there's a very exclusive club called the Chairman's Lounge in Qantas and it's invitation only. Its members have free champagne, steak dinners and cocktails on demand. Um, so yeah, here they talk about the battle between the Qantas and Transport Workers Union where they sacked 1,700 ground staff at the height of the pandemic. And so they described this club as a very the most exclusive club. It's part of Qantas's soft power diplomacy with political leaders, judges, current and former prime ministers, and senior public servants invited to enter. So basically, if you're higher up in the government and you get an invitation. Uh, I think when... Um, Dan Andrews was in some heat in the news. I'm I'm pretty sure, but you might want to double check uh, that his son was part of the chairman's lounge as well. And he's not a politician, so it was super dodge. OK, so here it says that it is believed some federal court judges judges are also members. So that's yeah, that's just regular judges and federal judges here. OK, so. A spokesperson said uh, from the high court said that all parties involved were aware and that there was no objection raised. <laughs> okay. Um, each of the justices is a member of the chairman's lounge, the spokesperson said. Membership is declared on the justices registers of gifts. So in Australia, they're actually required to declare any gifts over $200. Um, so a legal source described the membership of the Qantas club by multiple members of the judiciary as a ticking time bomb that should be publicly declared. Another senior lawyer speculated that it didn't, you know, it wasn't raised as an issue because the membership of the club, um, by judges was considered natural, like oxygen. Uh. A former Supreme Court judge, Anthony Wheely, KC, said judges should always declare such membership and can't just shove it under the carpet. He says, I personally think it should be declared if you're in a case involving Qantas and you're the recipient of benefits such as other exclusive membership offered by Qantas. Yeah, so he, <laughs> he doesn't. He thinks that judges should declare and have an open, um, but that the judges wouldn't necessarily be asked to disqualify themselves. Um, but it's kind of like he compared it to owning shares in a company. Um, you can't just shove that kind of stuff under the carpet because it's a con it would be a conflict of interest. Right. Um, and you need to be transparent. So they talk about the food on offer in the chairman's lounge for free for judges and politicians and invited CEOs includes free steak dinner, gin and tonic and salt and pepper squid. And then uh, these are, I think, some of the pictures of the lounge. Um, yeah, and apparently if you. <laughs> this is a very Australian way of describing this, but this regulator said, quote, part of the wankiness. <laughs> as well as the secret doors is the fact that you could ask for 
absolutely anything, even if it's not on the menu, and it will be cooked pretty quickly just for you. Wankiness means like, it's like an Aussie for uh, being like a stuck up or a snob. Like if someone calls you a wanker, it, it, you're kind of like up yourself. Um, <laughs> I just thought that description was hilarious. Uh, so sometimes this membership, it, uh, the membership is strictly confidential. So the boss, the former boss, Alan Joyce, the guy who's getting in a lot of trouble and he um, stepped down. Uh, he said sometimes it includes travelers flights upgrades like being upgraded to business class without having to pay for it for, with um, frequent flyer points um yeah but apparently other members have been offered upgrades in the past so the membership is for a period of two years and it's renewed at Qantas's discretion so you don't charge any fees or anything for being part of that club um yeah, so I, I that's pretty nuts that the government's doing that. And there's another related article uh, where we talked about this last time where Qantas had um, a $2.5 billion profit uh, for, I think it was, a, yeah, the 2023 financial year. So during the scandemic, um, they received government assistance, so taxpayer money. So you know, normal, regular citizens, that is you, you paid for Qantas to be propped up by the government. They gave them 2.4, uh, 2.5, no, sorry, $2.7 billion of government assistance during the, uh, during the scandemic. But that was also, at the same time, they sacked 1,700 ground staff at the height of the pandemic. So the Transport Workers Union is in a court battle with them. Um, because, yeah, they're getting a lot of heat for what they did. Uh, I think other articles mentioned something about outsourcing the work, but I'm not sure. It didn't really describe it here in this article. So... They said that Qantas reported that the first half of the 2022 to 2023 financial year, domestic travel had returned to 104% of pre-COVID levels. And it's currently, international travel is currently above 80% and is expected to match pre-pandemic rates by March 2024. So the trajectory is that it's going to be making even more money. Um, yeah, so... They've been having like staff shortages and operational delays and um, a lot of like uh, flight cancellations and they had the excuse of, oh, it's the pandemic, blah, 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 but uh, they also fired a bunch of people during that time. So, and then took government money. So that's pretty dodge. Um, I think like, oop, sorry, um, didn't mean to switch out of that. Um, I think that, yeah, like for example here, domestic revenue intakes currently sitting at 118% of levels since before the COVID pandemic, while international profits are at 123%. So they're making a lot of money. Um, and you know, it was at the expense of of regular people. And then they fired regular people, which is crazy. So the governments and Qantas are in bed with each other, basically. Uh, and the more that these cases reveal, the more, you know, it gets published. I think the more pissed the public is going to be because this is not a free market. The government's clearly propping up this company and it's uh, ha it's having a monopoly like what they did with um, Emirates um, lobbying, you know, the government against Emirates. Super dodge.